Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, oh, oh. Sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, you're listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. A uh, one and only, it is Steve Harvey. Yeah, got a radio show. Okay. This is uh, timely for everybody, I'm sure. Um, I want to offer you all uh, some encouragement because everybody need it. Let me tell you something. Uh, You strike out on your goals. You strike out on your aspirations. And so you strike out as it happens to all of us. Here it comes. Life. Life just hits one of them bad notes. As it always does. As it always does for all of us. For everybody. Now, when those bad notes happen, when the haters come out of nowhere, when the setback comes up, when the, when the out of nowhere appears, when the I didn't see that coming comes, here is, here is what you have to do. Here is the thing that I have been teaching myself for years that I used to not always understand, so I'm trying to give it to you. You have to be encouraged anyway. Now, that's difficult. Okay, Steve, what you talking about? You just told me all this discouraging stuff that can happen, and you said you got to be encouraged anyway. Yeah, man, you have to. Because what's happening to you right now, the thing that you're going through right now, the thing that everybody's going through right now, ain't nobody on smooth sailing, man. Everybody got something. And if they if they don't smooth sell it, just know this is coming. There's nothing I'm wishing on anybody. It's just that this is life. This is how it happens, everybody. So please stop stop getting on the old woe is me bandwagon. Oh Lord, why me? Oh Lord, something always happened to me. Something always happens to everybody. But here's what you got to do when you get in moments like this. You got to be encouraged. You got to remember in those times, in those times when it's going wrong, you got to remember all that you've been through. You got to remember all that you've come through. You have to remember those other times when you felt like this and somehow, unexplainably, you don't even really stop to say nothing about it. It just changed for you. 
and the problem that was is no more. And the situation that seems so insurmountable, you got over it. You got around it. You got over it. Sometimes you just got to slide right under it. Sometimes you got to plow through it. But in those times when it's discouraging for you, when you feel like giving up, those are the tests. Those are the moments that will determine whether we make it or not. I'll tell you one thing for sure. If you give up in these moments right here, here is a for show, you'll never make it. That's unquestionably the deal. If you give up in these dark times, if you give up in these what you think is insurmountable moments, if you turn back now, here is the 1,000% for show. You ain't going to make it. But there is a bright side to this situation. If you keep your head down, if you keep forging, if you keep pressing on, sometimes if you just stand there and sometimes get knocked to your knees, but if you stay in that place, if you just stay there and ride the storm out, my head is bloodied but unbowed. If you can just stay there, if you can sit in that moment and ride it out, you will win. You will pass the test and you will get to move on to the next level. But there is no next level without a test. You can't get to grade six without passing grade five. You can't be a senior without first being a junior. You can't graduate without fulfilling the hours and requirements. You see, I don't care what you do in life, look at it. It's all set up on levels where you've got to accomplish the thing before in order to get to the next level. And when you've made those level accomplishments, you get to graduate. Now you can go on and get a master's and a PhD, you can go on and become rich, you can go become wealthy, or you, can go, or you can go somewhere and think yourself in another set of circumstances. But you got to go through something to get to something. There ain't nothing free. So you can stop that notion about being successful. That is easy. Come on, man. If it was easy, what, 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 we, on, what we talking about? It is not easy. Stop thinking it is. It is difficult. But I'll tell you what's even more difficult than becoming successful. You want to know what that is? Try not being successful your whole life. That's hard. You are listening to a person who has done them both. Been successful and really, really been not successful. And I got news for you. Both of them hard. But I would rather deal with what it is to be something, to make something out of myself, to force myself to go to work when I don't feel like it, This morning was a rough get up for me, but I got up and I said, thank you anyway. Never give up. And I don't watch this dude till he didn't mess around and got close to me because he just never gave up. You can can never, ever give up. Never. It's not an option. Giving up cannot be an option for you. You cannot do that. it's, It's out of the question. It's inconceivable in your mind to quit because to quit is to what? What you get when you quit? Nothing. There is a reward for those who hang in there, who never give up, who forge through, who see it through, who get knocked down and get back up, who gets trampled, but somehow gathers themselves and get back to your knees. But stay in that place, man. Don't ever give up. Don't let go. Be encouraged. Think of all you've been through. Think of all you come through. Think of all he's done for you. Think of all the times you thought you wasn't going to make it, but somehow, without you ever even saying thank you, he got through. He got you through it anyway. That's that thing called grace now. We kind of need that in our life. I, I, all, I, all I need is a little more grace. You can't give God no money for grace, man. Grace is absolutely free. It's available to everybody. 
But you can't get none if you quit. Don't give up. I'll just tell you that flat out. Don't ever give up. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. What up, everybody? It is yours truly, J. Anthony Brown, for the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Today is... Just let them look at the radio because, you know, a lot of people don't know what day it is. They have no <laughs> idea. They don't know till we say what day it is. It is Tuesday, baby. <laughs> and you're listening to the baddest show in the universe. And we can't do this by myself, y'all. I got Miss Shirley Strawberry. What up, Shirley? What hey, up, what, what up? day is this Tuesday, you say? <laughs> I know, huh? huh? Good morning, Jay. Good morning. I know. It's Tuesday and I'm here. Oh, my God. <laughs> Carla Pharrell, it's Tuesday. What I'm doing here, Carla? Talk to me. Help me. You at your job, my brother. Yo, J-O-B. Good Tuesday morning to you, Jay, Tommy, oh, Shirley. It's such a weird feeling. It feels oh, so stop. <laughs> Last but not least, he's the king of pranks. Y'all put your hands together for Mr. Thomas Miles, y'all. What's up, Tom? Tom. Do you know what today is? It's our anniversary. <laughs> ah, top, top. Is it? No, 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 just no. Top of it. it just really? felt good right oh, there. It okay, just yeah. felt good, but mm-hmm. top, top. Yeah. Well, really, no. it's Taco Tuesday in Jay's world. I know. Huh? Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm. You know who loves Taco Tuesday, Jay? Yeah, we're going to launch that back again. So when the club is under construction now, so if you want to be a part of Taco Tuesday, Make all your tacos she gonna, now. Stop. Yeah. Did she you gonna hear ask, me? And she going to ask you again. Go <laughs> ahead. Ask him again. Said. <laughs> I said, do you know who else loves Taco Tuesday? LeBron well, James. Ooh, LeBron, LeBron James <laughs> loves Taco Tuesday. Oh, so well, maybe got, he'll come down. He's right up yeah. the street. I don't know why. Uh-huh. He's right up the street. He's got the J-Spot. Spot. LeBron special, you know. Don't embarrass us when LeBron comes to the J-Spot. Have By that you tacos. mean. By that you tree. know what I mean. Make him come out on Tuesday. <laughs> it takes, takes too forever. long. Look, you know yes. what? That is a, can I just say, people, people in Radio Land, that is a myth. All I want to say is my oh, tacos myth. are not that late. Okay? <laughs> but good, I will though. say this. Aren't Carla, girl, we were eating those tacos like, whoo, they were so good, though, Jay. It ain't, my good. tacos are like, no, I don't want to make a comparison, but. It might not be you when you call them, but they'll be right on time. You know, you know what? Else? Like That's the Lord? Lord. <laughs> Tacos is like, like the Lord. <laughs> you reaching now, Taco Tuesday. You are reaching. It might not be when you call them, but they'll be right on Always time. Always on time. Won't a taco do it? <laughs> Want a taco? Want a taco? Want a taco? Do it. <laughs> tacos but when it's are a good, good taco. Uh, it how about will. this one, Tommy? Tacos are good. All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> Let the church say amen. Yeah. Amen. Again. Taco will make a way out of no way. <laughs> how about this one, Tommy? One tacos on the main line. Tell him what you want. <laughs> there might be one taco today. <laughs> Won't you come? Uh, avocado with tomatoes, won't you come? Ground beef, <laughs> won't you come? Hard shell and soft shell, why don't you come today? I'm using all of that for my radio ad. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Well, you already know what kind of day it's going to be. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, Ask Bitter Man right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Ask Bitter Man. Bitter Man, go with your disclaimer. If you, by listening to this, get anything out that helps you, it's Mm -hmm. because you went in there on your own and got it, okay? He, he's saying I'm not I'm not here to help you, but you can help yourself. You That's can what he's help saying. yourself. Ahead, All right, here we go. Uh, bitter man. This one is from Missy in Talladega. Mm-hmm. Uh, Missy writes, my 50-year-old mom and my 45-year-old auntie are having sex with the same man. Mm-hmm. My mother was dating him first, and he cheated on her with my auntie. My mother broke up with him and started seeing a man that lives out of town. Mm-hmm. She doesn't see him but once a month, so I guess she got bored and started back sleeping with the cheater again. Mm-hmm. The guy brags about sleeping with them, and everyone mm-hmm. knows it except for my mother and my aunt. Mm-hmm. Should I tell my mother she's the side chick now? 
You ain't, got, you ain't got to tell your mama a damn thing. Your mama know <laughs> what's going on. Your mama, your mama just want to be with that man. She know what that man is about, and what that man gives to your mama, that ain't none of your damn business. Okay? Wrong people say this all the time. Stay out, wrong folk business. All right? It's three people's business. You ain't got no business in your mama, your auntie, and that man. Leave them. <laughs> And your mama is a grown ass woman. A grown ass good woman. Good and grown. Good and grown. Good, good and grown. You know what? Okay. Yeah, You're all I'm wife. saying is once you smell white diamond in the house, it's time to take your ass back to your place, okay? Because things about to happen, okay? Leave your mama alone. Go ahead on. Well, you you're not a liar. You're, you're not here to help. I see that now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Moving on. Paris in Teaneck, New Jersey says, My husband and I got married real young and had mm -hmm. two children before we were 22 years old. I'm 42 now, and my husband wants another baby, and I can't talk what? him out of it. Mm -hmm. Our oldest son is getting married soon, so we'll have grandkids soon enough. I'm considering getting a form of birth control so there won't be any surprises. I mm. need my husband to calm down and get a hobby because mm. my baby factory is closed. Okay. Am I wrong for this? No, you're not wrong. I don't know if you've ever been to an old person's house when uh -huh. that stove light is on and that washcloth is hanging over the sink uh -huh. and the floor is all swept up and the trash is put away. That mm -hmm. means... The kitchen is closed. Yeah. Right. There's no, yeah. Nobody's cooking a damn thing else in the kitchen. All the dishes have been dried and yes. put up. Yep. The kitchen is closed, and your husband needs to know the kitchen is closed. <laughs> We're not we're not baking bread no damn more, okay? <laughs> there'll be there'll be nothing in the oven. There'll be nothing in you can look in there if you want to, but ain't a damn thing in there. <laughs> what happens, Jay, when one cooks and one don't want to cook though? <laughs> you, I'm Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He has the right to go in the room and make a meal by his own damn self. That's <laughs> But you know how to handle it. You know, say it again, Tommy. You know how to handle it. Get on in there. All right. All right. He's not here to help you. Okay. So don't think that's what you're going to get. I don't know. Sir. Right. We might have help with that one. That might uh, have help. That might be some help there. Yeah, Paris, Paris might like that answer. Like, uh, <laughs> you're right. All right. Kendrick in Hawaii says, I'm 29 years old, stationed in Hawaii, in Hawaii and my 28-year-old girlfriend won't join me. I've been begging her to move because we've been in a long distance relationship for the past two years. I know she's the one and I want to marry this woman. She told me that shacking up goes against her parents' morals and values and is she trying to trick me into proposing before she moves? <laughs> she, she, she's trying to tell you something. Yeah, That's what she's trying moving. to do. She's trying to trick you in a damn thing. She's trying to tell you she got somebody. Anybody who don't want to go to Hawaii Hawaii? Paradise. <laughs> Hawaii? It's it's not Hawaii, it's you. You know, she she don't wanna be with you. That's all I'm saying. I don't know, there's not no trick. It's not there's not no hidden entendre. Am I saying it right? Hidden entendre. What is it? Oh, double double entendre, but you mean there you hidden go. Agenda. None of that. Hidden None agenda. of that. All mm -hmm. she is saying, she don't mind, you know. Zooming every now and then because we got that going on. Make you feel good a little bit. Make you feel good. <laughs> no send, smart woman is going anywhere send, without a, a ring. Send, and a date send you a that. screenshot, make you feel better because you over there by yourself. Yeah, yeah. But she don't want to be bothered with you at all. Okay. Well, no, you know, once you, once you get to girl, Hawaii, but... you stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck. It ain't a... If you hey, can't hey, get nobody, there is no there is no freeway to get you back That's to LA. Right. What's you, you Tommy? If there's nobody, if you got somebody in your life and they don't want to come to Hawaii <laughs> to see you, yeah. oh you got that God. out of that. Okay. No, <laughs> women Jay. know. We women know. know you don't go. Uh huh. You without don't follow a ring, your boyfriend. You follow yeah. your, husband, uh -huh. your husband, baby. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, if That's you right. follow your boyfriend, he might be a husband. We don't know. No one knows. No one knows. Nope. Yeah. Don't take that chance. <laughs> <laughs> I want you, Shirley. Uh -huh, That's how we're raised. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you don't want sweet pineapples every day, when you don't want that every day. <laughs> yeah. A pig.
pig with an apple in his mouth. A pig with an apple in his mouth. Right. A grass <laughs> dirt. You don't want that girl uh, flower in your head. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, we're moving on. John Treese in uh, Memphis says, my 27-year-old niece is messing with one of, one of my ex-boyfriends. She doesn't know that I know, but I found out through the guy. He was drunk at the club and was trying to grind on me, and I pushed him away. He said it was cool because he is sleeping with my niece. This man is 40 and way too advanced for my niece. He lives with a woman, and they love threesomes. Do I let my sister's child get turned out by this creep, or should I warn her? Well, hmm. the key word that you used in this whole letter was grind. Grind is an old word, as you right. Once you said he was grinding, huh. that means yeah. he's of age. Younger guys don't grind. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I did some of my best grinding in the eighth grade, Tommy. It's not my- about you! <laughs> I, I could count your change in your pocket, boy. Hey, Tommy, well, look they at the call time. me we Mr. Coffee. They call me Mr. Coffee because I grind so fine. That's a- <laughs> Thank you, bitter man. All right, coming up next, <laughs> the other fool in the house, nephew Tommy would run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann is standing by with our national news for today. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham has caught COVID-19. And he believes, yeah, he believes that his symptoms would have been much worse if he hadn't gotten the vaccine. Mm. Okay. Also, yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. more people will get vaccinated You know what? Now. Catching it will change your attitude toward it. That's the damn show. Sure. You're it right really about will. that, Jay. And it has. It mm-hmm. really has. I ain't got to catch it. I, I jumped I'm on I'm with that. you, Tony. No, no. Yes. <laughs> no, give me that shot. Yeah. Also in entertainment news, rapper DaBaby apologizes, and in other entertainment news, friends, family, and fans bid farewell to rapper Biz Marquee on Long Island. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour, but right now, the nephew is in the building with today's Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Neff? Media ministry. No. Say it again. Say it again. I'm say it again. I said media ministry. <laughs> Let's go, cat dog, if you would. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm trying to uh, reach Dre. Andre? Yeah, this is Andre. Hey, uh, Dre, you the person that runs the uh, the media at the church? You over the sound system and everything and all the, um, the the screens and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, I work with the church. Okay. Uh, how long you been at the church, man? I've probably been at the church for like five years now. About five years. Okay, okay. Listen, my name is Doug, man, Doug Newsom, and uh, I, haven't, I haven't joined the church yet. But uh, I've been coming because my cousin them go there. They've been going there for quite a bit. My my cousin, uh, uh, I got I got one cousin that's in the choir, uh, Latrice. You know who Latrice is, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I know the Latrice. Doug, you you ain't a member of the church yet? No, no, I'm not a member of the church yet. But you know, I I've been in there. You know, I, I'm liking the service and everything. So you know, it's just a matter of time. You know, uh, 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 uh when I feel like I'm I'm ready to actually join. But I. I, I I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I'm calling you because I got a, a, a bit of an issue about uh about something I've, I've been noticing for the last three weeks that's been going on in the church, and I wanted to uh you know I had to ask around who was over the media, uh yeah, mini- yeah, ministry. That's me. Yeah, that's that's what's you. What's going on, man? Okay, so uh man, I I, I don't know what's happening, uh and, and and I ain't gonna lie, I gotta be real with you. It pissed me off, but uh for the last three weeks. You know, uh, when my cousin get ready to sing, you know, I don't know why when she get up to sing that the mic just go out. You know what I mean? The mic just go completely out when she getting ready to sing. And I'm like, what? What? This don't make no sense, you know? So, Doug, man, I, I ain't been. It's not like I'm timing it. I don't know. I mean, we don't have the best equipment at the church, you know? Uh-huh. We just, we just got to work with what we got. Right. I mean, it's not like I'm sitting there trying to. Single out your cousin. Sometimes the mics get a glitch, man. But see, but see that, but see that's my problem though. The problem I'm having is the glitch happening every single time my cousin get the mic. You know, that's that's the problem I'm having. I'm like, okay, so every time Latrice get up there to sing, then you know the mic go out. I didn't came three weeks straight. I, I ain't heard my cousin saying nothing yet. So I, I, I'm calling you, bro, on on you know on some real man to man stuff. Just letting you know, bro, I'm coming to church again this Sunday. I'm coming now. If Latrice might go out again, hey dog, somebody gonna get the ass whooped. You, you gonna bring that energy to church? Um, say what now? You gonna bring that energy to church? I told you, man, it's just a glitch. Ain't nothing I could do about it. 
Okay, what what I'm saying though, bro, what I'm saying is this right here though, and I'm being as real as I can with you. If 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 Latrice might go out on Sunday, immediately after that service is over with, somebody getting their ass whooped. I don't know why you calling threatening a member of the church, man. Like I said, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I try to keep everything running cool. You know, I try to keep it running smooth. I can't tell you when a glitch is going to happen. It's electronics, man. It's old equipment. Now, I'd love for you to be a member of the church with us, but I can't. I mean, why are you calling up here threatening me? Hey, bro, because because I, I done came up there three times. Three times I done came up there to see my cousin sing, you know. My cousin been singing since we was kids. We all love to hear her sing. We love her voice. You know, we we, we you know we grew up listening to Latrice sing. So what I'm saying, I'm gonna say this here though, and I just said it, I just I just said it twice already. I'm coming up there Sunday. If if Latrice might go out, bro, let me just cut you off real quick. Ain't no way that you're gonna come up here and whoop nobody's ass, man. That just ain't gonna happen. Like I told you, it's a glitch, but you ain't coming up to the church talking all this shit and then gonna whip somebody's ass. That okay. ain't gonna happen. Okay, so I see where we at now. So so let me just go on and direct it this way. So let me say this from Doug to Andre, from me to you. I'm I'm letting you know right now. Come Sunday, if if Latrice might go out, not not know somebody, I'm whooping your ass, Dre. I'm whooping your ass if the damn uh, might go okay, out. Okay, okay. First off, ain't nobody whooping my ass, especially no punk ass dude named Doug, all right? He ain't gonna come to the church and whoop my ass. That ain't gonna happen. Okay, what 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 make you think you can't get your ass whooped, Andre? What makes me? You over here threatening somebody over here with the media? You want to come test these hands and come test the hands, man? You know what? Matter of fact, when y'all next rehearsal, I can just come on over there then. You come on over there, man. Why don't you come over right now? I'm over at the church right now. Oh, so you at the church right now? I'm at the church right now. Okay, I'm bet. Okay, okay right bet. Now. If you want to okay. catch this no, shit, no, 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 that's in cool. the parking lot. That's cool. But no, you're no. going to need the church after you don't get this ass Okay, hey, 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 Bob. Tell DJ and them we finna go to the church, dog. No, no, tell them we finna roll up there to this damn church, okay? Come on. Call all up. Call all up. Dog, you finna get your ass whipped, dog. So you done pushed up on the wrong one now. You done pushed up on the wrong one. So all, all this little old shit you talking, cool. You finna have eight dudes hey, come man, up there and whoop your ass right now. You finna so Dougie, you can bring Johnny, you can bring Billy, you can bring whoever the f you want, but it ain't gonna happen. Okay, okay, cool. And, and real talk, Doug, you done call me talking all this bull how you about to come up here and whoop my ass. And now you need like seven, eight other guys. Back in the day, we used to just handle this one-on-one. -on -one. And now you want to come up here talking all that shit. You're going to bring every cousin you got in your house. If you want to do this shit, man, come up here. Let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, 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 you, you scared or something? Ain't nobody scared, but you talking that you whooping my ass. Now you want to bring up every disciple you know, man. You know what? Bring whoever you want. Just don't bring nobody you want back because I'll put you all down. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you this here. I'm going to bring Tommy with me, and Tommy going to be the one that's going to act a damn fool with you. I'm telling you that right now. Who the is Tommy? So you don't know Tommy? Nah, I don't know Tommy. Okay, do you know Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Ah! I'm still calling this number. Hey, man, Latrice got me to prank phone call. You matter of fact, the whole choir is in on this, and they know that I am pranking you, Drake. <laughs> Man, now you got me done turning up on the radio. Man, now I got to go ask for forgiveness for all that smack I don't talk. Now come Sunday, I'm turning everybody's mic off. Okay, man, I got to ask you this, Dre. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? You know it's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And yo, Tommy, if I could turn your mic off, I'd turn that off too. Dre wasn't playing, was he? Shout, uh -huh. out Dre. Yeah. Shout, yeah. Out Dre. Shout out to Dre. Shout out to Dre. Shout out to Dre. You was talking all that trash. Now you need disciples to come up here and fight me. <laughs> come up here man to man and let's get it uh, on, buddy. Yeah, catch these hands. Catch these catch hands. Catch these hands. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the prank. That's to run that prank back. But y'all stay tuned. I'll be back in an hour with a nut. Watch me okay. work. Okay. All right, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Well, in entertainment news, hip hop artist Baby is apologizing for the Ooh. third time now over his homophobic rant mm. that led him to, that led to him getting dropped from various music festivals. The Baby apologized with a lengthy statement on Monday, saying he's educated himself and knows better now following the vile comments he made at the Rolling Loud Festival in Miami. He said, "Quote: I want to apologize to the LGBTQ plus community." For the hurtful and triggering comments I made, again, I apologize for my misinformed comments about HIV and AIDS, and I know education on this is important. Love to all. God bless. The baby also suggested he's a victim of high-speed social media, saying social media moves so fast that people want to demolish you before you even have the opportunity to grow, educate, and learn from your mistakes. As a man who has had to make his own way from very difficult circumstances, having people I know publicly working against me, knowing that what I needed was education on these topics and guidance has been challenging. Wow. What That's a what statement. you should have said what first. You yeah. should have said that. Had you said that yeah. right there, you wouldn't be in all this damn trouble. Now, man. which baby is this one? Because it's a bunch of them. <laughs> which is bunch the of baby. Lil, it's the baby, <laughs> the baby, not little baby. None of that. Right. This is the baby. Okay. Yeah, the baby. baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you yeah. should go one step further. One and step. Yeah. Further. What do you he's mean? He's got more work to do. Yeah, he's got. Yeah. But this he's will really it. put him over the top. He needs to be in that little Nas video, and then that all things. Okay, you know what? I'm not surely moving. The most on. recent, the most recent oh, video. My okay. In other uh, entertainment. That was that was Jay. Let's be clear. That was Jay. <laughs> oh, they know. Oh, they know. <laughs> Nobody else on this show is quite that ignorant, Jay. <laughs> yeah, My stupid is not right there. Right. And a little Nas video. <laughs> All right. In other, we are moving on. In other entertainment news, Biz Marquis' memorial service was yesterday. Uh, LL Cool J, Fat Joe, and Roxanne Shante, also Big Daddy Kane, were just wow. a few of the luminaries that were there to celebrate the life and the legacy of Biz Marquis. It was on Long Island yesterday. And as we told you, um, Biz Marquis lost his battle with type 2 diabetes, diabetes last month. Reverend Al Sharpton, always there, always there. We can always count on him to give That's the okay. eulogy. And uh, Biz's widow... Widow um, Tara Davis gave some emotional and very heartfelt remarks as well. She revealed that uh, the Obama sent her condolences letter, and uh, Biz Marquis' public memorial was live streamed on BET. He will be missed. So, in a tribute to the song we did about voting, and where I used the Biz Marquis track. A uh, good friend of mine, man, Jules Charleston, man, he put a video together where it makes it look like Biz is actually singing the song, telling people to go get vaccine. So I'm going to drop that on you. That's going to drop. That's when you say you're putting something out, it's uh-huh. going to drop. Okay, I'm, I'm dropping We that. know what drop <laughs> means. Okay, we know. Yeah, we're <laughs> drop is drop. We're, we're in radio. I'm dropping that. <laughs> What's the confusion? <laughs> Yeah, but, but R.I.P. Biz Marquis. Yeah, rest in peace. Yes. Very yeah. nice guy. One of the That's, nicest yeah. guys. Talk to you anyone who doesn't very say nice that same guy. thing, Jay. Very mm-hmm. nice, very nice man. Yeah, yeah. Just All a, of a beautiful soul. He will was. be missed. Mm-hmm. Will be missed. All mm-hmm. of the legends that you mentioned, Shirley, that were there. Uh, I saw some of Roxanne Shantae's Oh yeah, I did too. Uh, remarks. Roxanne. You saw Roxanne. that? Yes. 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 Wow. Yes. yes. Very yeah. heartfelt. Very yeah. heartfelt. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, he was a legend in the game, and, and he had non stop work because he did private parties. He non yes. he worked twenty four yes, seven. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Rest absolutely. in peace, Biz yes. man. We love you, man. Definitely. All right. Uh, as we move on now, it is and uh, switch gears here. It's time now for today's headlines. Jay, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Miss Ann Tripp. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, this is Andrew for the news. The U.S. Senate is finally poised to begin debating amendments to a roughly $1 trillion with a T dollar bipartisan infrastructure package. The bill includes more than $55 billion in spending for traditional stuff like uh, roads and bridges, railway, railways, and broadband. Once this bill is passed, though, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he wants to move on to a broader Democrat based uh, bill. It's a $3.5 trillion package, including new funding on health care, education, and measures aimed at combating climate change. The Republicans, however, are not expected to support this one. In an effort to cut down on all the shootings in and around Chicago, all gun sales in the state of Illinois now subjected to universal background checks under the legislation signed into law yesterday by Governor Jamie Pritzker. This bill 
is the most comprehensive reform to our state firearms laws in over a generation. This new law also provides funding for a stolen gun gate database and also money for mental health counseling for communities affected by gun violence. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham says he's tested positive for COVID-19. But Graham, a staunch Trump supporter, says he's sure that his symptoms are as mild as they are because he got vaccinated. Lindsey Graham is now one of the 72 members of the Congress who have tested positive for the coronavirus since March of 2020. The U.S. report over 1.3 million uh, new COVID infections in July. That's more than triple the number of new cases reported back in June. Since the federal ban on evictions expired over the weekend, landlords across the country now free to begin eviction proceedings against tenants who've fallen behind on their rent. Somehow, local governments, though, are scrambling to try and prevent a huge wave of evictions. They're trying. The Supreme Court, you know, blocked the Centers for Disease Control and the president even from extending the ban without congressional approval. That's the problem. If no rescue comes, more than three and a half million Americans could lose their homes. Finally, Simone Biles says she's basically over what gymnasts call the twisties. So she competed early this morning on the balance beam in Tokyo. Her teammate, Jade Carey, says she's so happy that she's back. Having Simone being back is great. I'm really proud of her. She's been through a lot this Olympics, so it's going to be great to see her out there. She won a bronze. Biles is the most decorated female gymnast in history. She's a brave competitor, having competed with broken toes and other injuries. She survived sexual abuse. Yesterday, Biles tweeted about the outpouring of support she's received. She said she made her feel really good. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, uh, Tommy, I think you should do the honors here since uh, you guys are both on the same team, <laughs> Team Tommy. Always, always, always. Yeah, no, it's not always. the same team. It's Tommy, and I'm Team Tommy. Get it right now. Okay. It's yeah. Tommy. <laughs> I'm Team Tommy. What's the difference? Did that it's sound weird? It's a big it's difference. A, that sounded huge weird, didn't it? Difference. Yeah. It's a yeah. huge difference. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to go what? into the mind, the mind of J. <laughs> Anthony Brown. All right? We're going deep. It's like a museum, a place that you've never gone before, way deep in the back of J. Anthony Brown's mind. Don't don't go that deep. Okay, all right. First of all, as you know, Labor Day weekend, I'll be at the Asher Theater. That's uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I mean, Myrtle Beach, yeah, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and um, Charlotte on the 21st of August. Anyway, so I'm in the mall the other day. When is a garment too big for you? When is it too big? Because I see people with stuff on, and I'm saying to myself, that looks too big. If you're stepping on it, that means it's it's too it's too damn big. It's just right. there's no other way to get around it. If you uh-huh. gotta hold it up, it's it's because <laughs> it's because it's too big. It's too <laughs> large for you. Uh-huh. If you got if you got to hold it with both hands up uh-huh. so that it don't fall down to me that's too big that's mm-hmm. okay we got that out of the way now okay. mm-hmm. if you look on the other side of the mall you'll mm-hmm. see people with some stuff on and you say to yourself that is too small that is too <laughs> that's, that's tight tight <laughs> that, that, that is I don't know if you if you're aware of it. I, I mean, I was in fashion. I, I did alterations. I made clothes. I know, you know, I've adjusted. I've taken stuff up, let stuff out. For me, when it's too small, if the button, if there's difficulty buttoning that up, if you if you can't uh-huh. get that button to to just real easy, that means it's too small. And if you've got on a pair of pants and when you uh-huh. take them off and your waist itches, if there's an itch, <laughs> If you rubbing that. If you, if you, if you, if you gotta rub there, if you gotta rub your entire yes. waist yes. once it's you red. take that garment off, it's red. that <laughs> that is that's too that's too tight. Uh-huh. That is too uh-huh. tight. If if so it stupid. when you take it off, it's up in your butt. It's completely <laughs> up. I mean, to where. Pull it you, out. you gotta really get a friend that you yeah. know real that really cares about you to, to get that out. That's, that's really up in there. We and gotta go you, crazy. You actually gotta throw that in the trash. Yeah. Okay, right. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> 
ignorant show. Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of this ignorant show right after this, Jay. Uh. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. President Biden and his administration plans to keep on pushing as U.S. vaccinations did increase yesterday with over 700,000 doses administered. That's nice. good. That's progress. Mm-hmm. So we want to say to the Steve Harvey Nation, please listen. We want to try to help save lives. And right now, we want you to hear part of an article that an ICU doctor posted on Yahoo.com. Her name is Dr. Neville, and uh, she wrote, I cannot understand the simultaneous decision to not get vaccinated and the demand to end the restrictions imposed by a pandemic. I cannot help but recoil as if I've been slapped in the face when my ICU ICU patient tells me they didn't get vaccinated because they just didn't get around to it. Although such individuals do not consider themselves anti-vaxxers, their inaction itself is a decision. A decision to not protect themselves or their families to fill a precious ICU bed, to let new variants flourish, and to endanger the healthcare workers and immunosuppressed people around them. Their inaction is a decision to let this pandemic continue to rage. I am at a loss to understand how anyone can look at these past months of the pandemic, more than 600,000 lives lost in the U.S. and more than 4 million worldwide, and not believe it's real or take it seriously. Dr. Neville went on to say, now I painfully realize Perhaps we were never on the same side and we never had a common enemy. Perhaps the war has been among ourselves all along. Hmm, We have won many battles, but unvaccinated America is choosing to let COVID win the war. Wow. Well said. Wow, that is deep and, yeah, very profound. Very profound, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Neville. But you know how, what? How long? I think it's go Dr. Ahead. Neville. Ahead, I Dr. Think, Neville. Cheryl, Dr. I think, Neville. I think, mm-hmm. but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you saying, Jack? Go ahead, Tommy. Go ahead. I was just saying, how, how long does it take? How many people do you have to see oh, yeah. go down before you make a you're decision? Right. I, I'm, you know, it's almost like you're waiting and waiting until the very last second, and, well, and that's going to catch up to you and bite you in the butt, you know? And, and so You're right. I, I just don't get it. I don't get not getting this shot. I do not understand it. And sometimes, unfortunately, Tommy, you say how long. Sometimes it's until you get it. Then you right. see. Then yeah. you see. And we don't want late. you to go there. We you're don't want talking, that to you're, happen. You're talking about Lindsey Graham having the virus. Mm-hmm. Now, his whole mm-hmm. approach and his whole attitude, because he has it, it's a different tone now. Yeah. And once yeah. you catch it yeah. or somebody near you catches it, mm-hmm. you look at it different, which is yeah. which is why the numbers are going up with people getting vaccinated. That's because right. they see that people are dying and they don't have to die. They really do not have to die. And that's what the doctor said the other day. She said, you know, those of you who don't take the virus and don't get the shot, you just, a lot of you people are going to die. You just, yeah. it's but you fact. know what, Jay? Yeah. But you got a, you got a, you got, you know, <laughs> congregations. You got, you got pastors telling their entire congregation, oh, man, "Don't take right. this shot. Yeah. Don't come right. in here with that mask. Yeah. Get out of here with mm-hmm. that mess." And you know, when you put that in there, you know they've been following you. That's your flock, and your flock is is feeding off of that. So now mm-hmm. what? You know, now they're not doing it. The kids aren't doing it. Nobody's doing it, and it just it, nothing happens. And now you got a whole group of people, a mess of people, that's probably gonna get sick. Yeah, it's you know, part of, us, part of us having COVID and, you know, getting the vaccine and all of that was so we could come together with our families and right. our friends and stuff like that. I remember when Biden first took office, he said maybe by Thanksgiving, you know, or, and Christmas, we can have our family dinners again. Well, yes. not if it's going backwards, not You're if right. people won't get vaccinated and, you know, it's spreading again and there's this new variant out here. Not, yeah. You know, I was looking forward to that. Finally, you know, some company, uh, you know, dinners, things like that for the holidays. But we're, we're definitely going in the wrong we're direction. Going in, we're, we're going are. in the wrong we're going, direction. Yeah. We're going backwards. If people are mm-hmm. hesitant in doing that, they just need to talk to their doctor. Yeah. They yeah. need to right, get right. medical advice. Right. They don't need to listen to social media. If you don't want to listen to the news, if you don't want to listen to us, then you need to get doctor, medical, health professional mm-hmm. advice as to what is best for you. 
Yeah. Before it's too late. This, right. this shot could save your life. Right. It, it absolutely can. We need right, you around uh, and listen to the show. We need you. <laughs> <laughs> We're being selfish. Uh. Yes, yes. All right. Coming up next, it is the nephew as we switch gears here with the prank phone call for today right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, she's just downright nasty. Nice. Wow. <laughs> she's nice. just downright nasty. Nice. Uh, we'll get, yeah, we'll get into that in just a few. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for his nephew? What's happening? Paper clips. Paper That's clips. It. Paper That's clips. How can you put someone clips. on paper clips? Paper Sounds so clip. innocent, don't it? Yeah. Paper clips. Just watch yes. what he do. Yeah. Yes. He All right, you ain't never paper paperclip till you paperclip with me. Watch me paperclip. Paperclip. Come on, cat. Travel. I'm trying to reach Veronica. This is she. Hi, Veronica. How you doing? My name is Philip. I'm from uh, Corp. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How can I help you today? You were with the company uh, here. Um, uh, you'll see, you just left about, what, six months ago? That's correct. Okay, and you left with a severance, am I right? That's right. I'm sorry, who am I speaking with? Uh, Philip. My name is Philip. Philip. Uh, I'm actually calling on some security questions and wanted to reach out to you. Now, you, you own your own travel agency now? That's correct. Okay. Um, now, you actually left with a severance uh, when, you, when you left the company, is that right? That's right. Okay, and how long were you actually with uh I was there for eight years. I'm sorry, who am I speaking to again? My name is Philip. I'm with security. And what can I do for you, Philip? Uh, well, we got, we have, you, you, you started this business now. Did you start it before you left? Philip, I started this business after I left there. You, left, you started it after you left there? That's correct. One month. One month after you left there. Okay. So the reason why I'm giving you a call and I've been, you know, we've gone through some security tapes and things of that nature. We're, we're, we're missing so many rims of paper. We're missing thousands of paper clips. We're missing so many office supplies, and it's been brought to the security's attention that it's targeting that it, you are the person that has taken all of this this uh, yeah. office. I'm sorry? Let me, let me get this right, Philip. You are calling my place of business, asking me if I have used paper clips and paper. I have customers in my establishment right now. I can't talk to you about this. Okay, ma'am, listen. I know that I'm sorry for calling your place of business, but I want to say this. We're at, we're at the, uh, of the point of actually picking you up behind items that have been taken from the company. So I wanted to call and see if we could get it taken care of over the phone. Now, mm-hmm. if you got to go, then I'm going to have to actually come out to your business, and that's something that I'm trying not to do. You know what? Hold, hold on one second. You hold that thought. Who the f- is this on my phone talking about some damn paper clips? I have been gone from there for six months, and you're calling me now about some paper and some what? Paper clips, ma'am. We're, we're missing at least 5,000 paper clips. You, you, I'm going to tell you what you can do, Miss. <laughs> I have been out of that company for six months. I worked for y'all for eight years, and you all let me go. I didn't take anything from you. Okay. Have you ever used any paper or any paper clips outside of, of <laughs> Have you done that? Of course I use paper every day. I run a business. Okay, but you're using our paper for your own personal business. Your travel agent or whatever it is that you have, you're using <laughs> office supplies. That right there is against the law. Oh, no, I will go and buy you some damn paper clips. Okay, well, we don't want paper clips, ma'am. Now, we've given you a severance play, and from my understanding, it's been a substantial amount, and right now, is going to be filing charges and taking you to court over these paper clips and paper. I'm going to tell you what you can do with the 5,000 paper clips. I'm going to paper clip them together and hang you off for buy your I ain't stealing no damn paper clips. You're going to call me six months later talking about some paper and paper clips. Okay, ma'am, I, I, I don't want to go this back. This is some and forth. Philip. I'm sorry? This is some Philip. So are you wanting to return all the merchandise? Because it looks like... I didn't it take was... no merchandise. I don't have to steal nothing from y'all. I worked for you for eight years. Talking about right. I stole and, and, something. And I was employed years, at a year. For eight, for eight years, you stole... Paper, paper clips, you stole office supplies, scissors, masking tape, you have taken markers, pins. We got it down to a I don't know what videotapes you got, Philip. I ain't steal nothing from y'all. I was employee of the year. You all gave me a severance package. How dare you call me six months later? You can take them paper clips and shove them up your behind. Excuse me? Are we done here? 
No, we're not done here. So take no, your videotape I... and your paper clips and your scissors, and you know what to do with them. No, no, I, I don't, ma'am. Now, listen, what we're going to have to do is you're going to get served right there at your travel agency. Where are you located? Excuse me? Oh, you know what? I'm going to give you my address because you come over here. I got some scissors for your <laughs> Philip. I don't have time for this. You want my address? You can come on over here. Look it up. Google we me. Want our, we want our paper clips back. Google now. me. Come get them then. Matter of fact, give me your address, Philip. I'll bring them to you. Steal no damn paper clips. I'm a Christian woman, and you got me on this phone cussing and fighting with you. I'm not fighting with you over no paper clips. What's your address, Philip? We're missing over 5,000 paper clips, and we need those. Now, you know what, Phil, what's your address? I'm going to bring your damn paper and paper clips to you. How about that? So, so, give me so your you, address. So you are. You must be so Pick, Philip. You are guilty of using a paper, aren't you? We all use paper, Philip. I don't okay. steal. Which means, guess what? It's against the law, which means Let you me have stolen something. If you have taken one paper clip, it's against the law. And we Let want our dog on paper car, clips back. Philip. You got pins in your car, Philip? That's a corporation? I bet you do. But I work for the company. I'm trying to run a business, so you stealing too. Give me your boss's number. You calling my damn phone talking about some pins and paper clips. You lost your Mind. Give me your address. I'll bring the pens and paper clips. You ain't got to come you, 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 you've taken so many pens and so many paper clips, thousands I'm of rooms of paper. I'm trying to run a business. Don't call my phone with this. Okay. You're talking about some paper clips. Give me your address. I'm going to say this to you now. I'm going to go ahead and what order the police say? to come what? over. I'm ordering what? the police to come and pick you up, okay? Because I'm trying to get the problem taken care of over the phone. Bring the police back. and you come with them. Come get it. I got something for your when you get here. Bring them. You calling me about some paper and paper clips. I've been gone from there for six months. You crazy. Ma'am, you have stolen paper clips from the company, and we want our paper now, clips back. Bring your over here. You want to get some damn paper clips, and I'm going to call my man so he can kick your over here if you want to. You want the address? You want the address, Philip? Come on. I'm a professional. I'm trying to run a business. I got to walk away from my customers and deal with some about some pens and papers. Are you and paper getting clips. Me? And paper clips. Because you stole over 5,000 paper. You're a thief. And, and you also, you better be ready because you stole some stuff for Tommy. And he's been over here about it, too. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, Tommy. Tommy says you stole a bunch of his stuff. Listen, I don't know nobody named no dad. You don't know nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show? You don't know him? What you say? <laughs> I say, do you know nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show? Do you know him? <laughs> you, you, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Your girlfriend Dorothea got me to prank phone call you. Ooh, I'm gonna kick her. I'm, I'm going to get her right now. <laughs> I'm gonna kick her. Calm down, you good? <laughs> you made me step in the back room on you. Ooh. <laughs> Hey, let me ask you something, baby. What is the baddest, I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. Dorothea is on. <laughs> what? Paper clips. You play too much. Zero to what, 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 60 what? so quick. They go boom. They right there, man. They go. Yes. You get them to go, right? Yes. Zero wow. to 60. How you get My them people. to engage that long is amazing. Because <laughs> once they once black people get upset, everything else yeah. don't Yeah, don't, they got to hear it all. Yeah, we're going paper to the clips. end. And paper clips. <laughs> <laughs> and it's weird because some foolishness we hang up on, and in some foolishness mm-hmm. we just stay right. engaged. Yeah, you yeah. have the time for it. I got the time for it. I'm here. I'm here for it. Let's go. Yes, that's it. Let me give y'all this right here. October, October the 16th. All right, Saturday night, October 16th. It is called Sweetest Day Comedy Takeover. Where? Detroit, Michigan. What venue? The Music Hall. Who on the show? Dominique, Rodney Perry, Tommy Davidson, and Guy Torrey. And hosted by yours truly, Nephew Tommy. It's the Sweetest Day Comedy Takeover. Saturday, October the 16th at the Music Hall, Detroit, Michigan. Tickets go on sale this week. Wednesday. Did you hear me? I said this Wednesday. Tickets it, on it, sale. Nephew, coming to Motown. <laughs> yay, yay. All right, Love nephew, it. back at it, back at it. All right, coming up back next, Strawberry Letter. Subject, she's just downright nasty. We'll get nasty. into it <laughs> right after this. 
No one wants to be unsafe online. Even just buying something online, like socks, can feel like giving up a lot of personal information. Every time you give up info, you may give up some safety too. Norton 360 with LifeLock helps keep your digital life safer. With device security, a VPN, and identity theft protection all in one. No one can prevent all identity theft, but you can opt in to cyber safety with Norton 360 with LifeLock. Save 25% or more off your first year at Norton.com. Com slash Harvey. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please, baby, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter because we could be Pop reading it. your letter. <laughs> That's for always for you, Jay. Live <laughs> on the air. Just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And who knows? It could be yours. You never know. All right, let's buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, she's just downright nasty, okay? Uh, Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been with my wife for 13 years, but we've been married for nine years. We have three children, ages 4, 7, and 10. During our marriage, I've cheated and mismanaged our finances a few times. Whenever I messed up, I fessed up, and she was always willing to forgive me and move on. But when she's angry with me, she's just downright nasty. She spit on me and thrown things at me out of anger, and she will leave our home with the children for days without telling me where they are. Five months ago, she figured out the password to my phone and was checking my texts and found pictures of a woman that I had been sexting. I never made plans to hook up with this woman, but my wife did the usual thing by disappearing, and a week later, she called to invite me to meet her to talk. She gave me the address to an apartment complex. It was a very nice place, and I noticed her 40th birthday picture along with a picture of our children on the mantle. She told me it's her new home, and she wanted me to see it before our kids moved in. She gave me divorce papers and told me she's done, done, done with me. Period. I tried to caress her and calm her down, but she was very cold towards me. She told me she's met a great man and he's been giving her the best loving she's ever had in her life. Then her brother walked in and said it was time for me to leave. I swore to her that I was going to find the man that broke up my family. She said I'm the man that broke up our family. She is dead wrong for blaming me after she forgave me and to get keep our family together. Uh, how, how can it be my fault when I haven't cheated in years? Why is she being so nasty toward me now? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> why would you have the audacity to even ask that question? Okay. Why is she being so nasty toward you now? Why did you cheat on her for years and mess up the money? I, I mean, really, what is wrong with you? Uh, did you not read your own self letter? Did you not read it before you sent it in? You cheated on your wife, not once, not twice, but a few times. You also also messed up the finances more than once or twice, and that's big as well. And now you're shocked. You're shocked that your wife has left you for good. Dude, you blanked up your marriage, okay? Not the man you say you're going to find for breaking it up. Your wife told you you broke it up. So look in the mirror, okay? Are, are you listening to any of this? I mean, is anyone at home inside your head? You're delusional at this point. She was just sick and tired of you and your mess, okay? That happens. That happens. Women get fed up. You know that, all right? In her own words, uh, she was done, done, done with you, period. She's had enough. And it was stupid of you to think that you could just cheat and cheat and cheat with no consequences. Uh, this is what can happen, you know, when you, when you take your marriage and your family for granted. That's why you should never gamble with your marriage. You lost. 
You gambled and you lost, and you have only yourself to blame. So get used to your new normal, joint custody, the single life, and plenty of child support to pay for your three babies, okay? I don't feel sorry for you. I don't. I, I'm sad that this happened, that your marriage broke up. But, you know, I, I will say this to you. You have to learn from this horrible experience, and it is a horrible experience. Divorce is horrible, especially for the kids and everything. But you got to become a better person here so you can be an example for your children. All right, Jay, what yes, you got? Uh, I'm going I'm to go over this whole thing again because it's a lot. 13 years of marriage, you lost money during the marriage. That's not good. None of that is good. You messed up cheating over and over and over and over. Not to cheating, but you got caught. Damn, I mean, that's, you don't learn, you haven't learned a damn thing. You really have not learned anything, especially how to cheat. So when she got, when she caught you, she spit on you and went in your phone. Here's a rule. Once a lady gets a new place and invites you over to the new place and it's Come all on. fixed up and everything, and, you know, she got a key and, you know, getting mail there. It is, it's over for your ass. It's completely over. She, she mapped this out perfectly, okay? And then you going to find that other dude. I don't think you want to do that, okay? I just, I don't know who this, I don't know who this dude is. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go looking for an ass whooping if there's not one waiting on you. Because she already... <laughs> She already had her brother waiting on yes. you if you had got out of hand. Now you're sitting there with no woman and two ass whoopings. You don't want that. You just don't want that at all. So, <laughs> no, I mean, one ass whooping is really bad. But to have two, and it's possible that you can get two in the same day. So what I would do, get my stuff together, accept what she's saying to you, and leave her alone. And the next woman you get, try not to get a spitter. That's what you try not to do. Try to ask, <laughs> ask in the beginning of the relationship, do you spit? <laughs> but Jay, why isn't he taking any of the blame for what he did? Well, it he ain't thinks about, this is all her I think, fault. I think it's more so him not taking the blame as opposed to what's what's unanswered. We know that the brother was there knowing he could whip his ass. That's why the brother yeah. was there. The <laughs> Right. He did All leave right. immediately, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> he did leave. Didn't he? <laughs> There's another part to this letter coming up. We haven't heard from the nephew. So we'll be back with part two of today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, she's just downright nasty. nasty. At 23 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, we're going to recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, she's just downright nasty. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a man wrote in. Uh, he's been with his wife for 13 years. They've been married for nine. They have three children, ages four, seven, and ten. Now, during the marriage, he admits that he cheated uh, a few times. Uh, he cheated. He mismanaged finances. He did all that a few times. But he said whenever he messed up, he fessed up, and his wife forgave him, and, uh, you know, they were able to move move on. But when she's angry with him, he says she's just downright nasty. She spit on him. She threw things at him out of anger. And then, you know, she, she has a habit of uh, uh, leaving the house, taking the kids and leaving the house. And he just hates that. Why does she do that? Why does she have to be so nasty? I thought she forgave me. So um, his wife found his phone. There was some text messages in there. He had been sexting another woman. And that apparently was the last straw for his for his wife so his wife uh invited him over so they could chat and come to find out this was her new place she had a picture of herself her 40th birthday uh, up on the mantle with the kids and uh you know her brother came out and said it's time for for you to leave she she handed him divorce papers she was upset she said she's done 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 with him now the man who wrote the letter the husband is like how could she be so nasty how could she do this to me uh i stopped cheating a long time ago he can't wait to get out and find the man who broke up his family it's you dude it's you okay <laughs> so that's the basic recap tell me what you got I don't want to help you. I want to help her. Why am I helping your behind? Why would I even spend waste my time on telling you what you need to do to get your family back? What you need to do to do this and to do that? Why am I helping you? I want to help her. You got your nerves. 
You got your nerves to be mad at her. You know what? Let me tell you. If you talk to her, tell her I said this. She should call all the ladies you cheated with and get them to help her move. That's what she needs to do. Okay? That's why I'm not helping you do a damn thing. This is about your wife who you have sent through turmoil. All right? You know what? She should have pictures on the mantle. Matter of fact, of her new man and the kids. That's right. That's what I think. Whoa. To hell with you. You have I'm sorry. I can't I can't have your back. Matter of fact, I ain't gonna lie. I take it to a whole nother level. Matter of fact, you didn't send all you got all these nude pictures and stuff in your phone. Guess what? I'll be sending you some nude pictures if I was your wife. And guess what? It'll be nude pictures of my new man. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah, here go my new man over here by the nightstand. Naked. Okay? Here go my yeah. man in the kitchen cooking. Naked. Okay. All right. I'm, I Say promise again, you, you go naked. Okay. <laughs> My man out there in the backyard cutting the yard. Guess what he is? He naked. Since you got all these naked pictures, you got these ladies and everything. You done completely disrespected your wife to the highest of 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 this dis, dis here it is, of disrespectivity. That's what you have done. Okay. I said it, Carla, of disrespectivity. And I'm sorry. Now you have lost your children. Mm-hmm. You got ages 4, 7, and 10. Yeah. Now you're not going to see them on a daily basis. Now you're not going to be in their lives as much as you should be. And you know what? I, the only thing I don't like in the entire letter that I don't agree with, I do not agree with anybody spitting on anybody. I don't care oh, what's no. happening. No. I don't that like that. that. Okay? That was nasty. That was, that's the nasty part. Got that. that. But but all the other nasty belong to you. Yeah. You got, done one all the, you got a bunch of nasty. You bro. got a million nasties <laughs> to her one. And I'm sorry. It's time for you to go. Hopefully, when you get another family, hope if you get one, you'll know you'll you know make up for your mistakes, learn from your mistakes, head in the right direction. But you're gonna have to do right by these kids. That right there is what you're gonna have to Absolutely. do. Absolutely, you've lost. And, you and have that's lost. A, that's the problem. That's the thing that bothers me because I don't really think he gets it. He's mm. still blaming his wife. So until he learns his lesson, until uh-huh. he learns from his mistakes, he's mm-hmm. not going to be able to move on. Because at, at the till the very end of the letter, he's still blaming his wife, blaming the other her, man. Right. He doesn't see himself in this yeah. letter, what he did to cause all of this. This is a train wreck, and he caused it. From everybody his don't. Everybody don't learn lessons, though. Yeah, everybody and, don't. And, and because he doesn't see what he did wrong, he doesn't see it. But not only did he cheat on her, but he messed up the finances too. Yeah. Come on, yeah. dude. Come on. And, and like and, I well, said partner, earlier, don't go yeah. looking for and that man. Gonna and I hope Jay. when you go over there, I hope if you do go, I hope when he open the door, I hope his ass is naked. I hope he is. <laughs> You ain't had a good ass whoop until you had one naked. I hope I mean, you go over there with it. Go over there. Really? You let a naked dude whoop your ass, that is an ass whoop. <laughs> that, be, that becomes a how about that time? <laughs> how about that time what you went over there? What is it, Jack? How about that time you went over your ex wife's house and that naked dude whooped your ass? How about that? <laughs> Well, who's you saying really that to him, Jay? His friends. Everybody. It's, it's, uh-huh. it's two times. It's a how about that time and remember that time. It's two. Remember that? It's two. It's Say it, dude, remember you that remember time. That dude, you remember that dude cutting that yard naked and you pull up in the driveway and he beat the living hell out of you. You remember that? Oh, remember that time and how about that time? That's what you don't want to become. Yeah. Remember that time you went to go pick up your son and take him to football and that man answered that door and whooped your ass right there. You know you uh, remember that time that naked dude showed up on your job and whooped your ass? <laughs> In your <All> right. cubicle. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I think we get it. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand, too. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, sports talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time for sports talk and all of that. And I got to ask you guys, did you get caught up or choked up, I should say, watching the uh, Olympic athletes win gold, silver, or bronze? I mean, regardless of what country uh, they're representing, from the GOAT Simone Biles Mm -hmm. to gold medalist swimmer Chase Calise. That boy there. That boy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. What about Anthony Jarrett? The runner. I mean, he was, yeah. Well, well, I, his story was cool because he was tripped by Botswana's Nigel Amos when both runners collapsed, but they walked together and finished the 800-meter semifinals. That's I just great. thought that yeah. was a, a great 
right? Yeah, mm -hmm. show of just showmanship and brotherhood and love, you know, when you saw them just So, yes. wait a minute, though. Arm in arm. Let me ask this. He, he tripped how? Yeah, Amos happened. tripped Jared, and then they mm -hmm. got a, he got them up together, and mm -hmm. uh, Jared, the American... They just walked to the walked finish together. line. Yeah. It was just sportsmanship. He yeah. Yeah. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah. 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 I think I'd have whooped Amos' ass after we got through walking past that line. <laughs> I think I'd have got past dude. that line. Yeah, yeah. You I didn't lost a gold medal buddy, behind this. Yeah. I, I kind of could have won this race <laughs> if you wouldn't have tripped me. But it's all right. All right. But it just showed that, you know, some things are, are yeah. even better than even winning, yeah. you know. I thought it was mm -hmm. a good moment in terms I, of, I you know, too, Jay. In, in yeah. a touching moment. You know, I don't get touched often. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> when I see so you take it wherever you if can. It, if it touched me, then that's, that was a real moment. <laughs> you didn't win the gold, but that's a golden moment. How about yeah, that? that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. But you know what's so weird? Moment. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the comedian by the name of Franklin Ajay. He had this uh, yeah. great yeah. comedy bit about uh -huh. in the Olympics, you know, like if you're in the Olympics and you come up in last place, you mm -hmm. say to yourself, I'm in last place and I, and you know, I practice all year and I'm in last place. <laughs> I could have got this without practice. <laughs> no, 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 Jay, no, no. My favorite Franklin and John is, is when the wide world of sports used to come on. <laughs> And you oh, see yeah, the yeah, agony, yeah, you see the yes, agony yes. of defeat. Yes. And you see that that guy skiing that's coming down that hill. And I mean, he it is terrible. And he said, the agony of defeat. The guy skiing, can he ski at all? Because <laughs> you know he broke every bone in his He everybody. broke every bone. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's great to watch, though. It really is, man. It really is. That's what I was saying. That's the question. Like, it doesn't matter yeah. what country. You man. still kind of root yeah. for them, right? Yeah. yeah. I mm -hmm. bow down just for gladiators, period, man. They are awesome. yeah. They amazing, yeah. man. They yeah. amazing. Have you they seen the, bad, the badminton? The people playing badminton, it's like unbelievable, man. I love badminton. I don't know what it is. Yet. All right, all right. But yeah, go Olympics. All right. Coming up, she Bill said and Melinda. Go Olympics. Go Olympics. Oh, that's yes. good. That's good. Go Olympics. Yes. Go Olympics. Go Olympics. Go Olympics. Everybody. All right. <laughs> Coming up, Bill and Melinda Gates. Well, their divorce is final. So we'll talk about divorce right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, check this out. All the single ladies, all the single guys, Bill all and Melinda. All the single Gates. ladies. All yes. The single ladies. <laughs> all the single ladies. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, go ahead. Bill and Melinda Gates are each officially very eligible bachelor and uh, bachelorette now because their bitter divorce is now a done deal. Court records confirm the judge signed off on their divorce on Monday. Talk about a way to start your week, huh? Now, according to TMZ, <laughs> Melinda filed for divorce back in May after 27, count them, 27 years of marriage. And there was no prenup. Okay, back then what? they weren't doing that. Damn, All right, Bill. Bill's, Bill's net worth is estimated at more than $130 billion. So the divorce settlement hey. could leave Melinda over $65 billion with a B dollars. Way to go, Melinda. Yes. So here's a question. Here's a question. Get in there, girl. Here's a yes. <laughs> Two of them really rich. They're rich. They bought, they're out there in the club. Who, who will hook up with somebody first, him or her? Who do you think? Him it or her? It doesn't matter. No, I'm just asking. Just asking. Which one you him? think will find out? Him? Well, men are probably already hooked up. Him. <laughs> but but all, the guys, all the guys are definitely going to swarm on her. So, yeah. so, okay. So, check this out, guys. A study published in the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy found that there were four main reasons cited for divorce. Lack Man. of love or intimacy. Mm -hmm. Well, Jay, you probably an, you're an expert. I know all on of this. them. You probably yeah, read them. I've heard lack of yeah. lack of love or intimacy, <laughs> mm -hmm. communication problems. That's a big mm -hmm. one. Uh -huh. Lack mm -hmm. of sympathy, mm -hmm. respect or trust, mm -hmm. and growing apart. Yeah. So, yeah. and there's one Jay, more. There's one more. What? What's that's that? That's not on that list. Okay. What is it? Jay? What is that? Yo, damn mama. It's not on that <laughs> list. It's on there. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't either. Look, look, look down way at the bottom. It's on there some damn way. Yo, yo, damn mama. <laughs> so Jay, would you would you like to share with us why you got a divorce? Well, it's on. Well, I, Steve has said this, and I'm saying it again. It has it's been you. me. It's yeah. me. Do you just I get mean, tired of people, Jay? Uh -huh. Yes, I do. 
I she do doesn't at some like point, company. I really do. You know, <laughs> Even I kind of like, wife. I like living by myself. All the ladies that ended up with houses are very nice women. They're very, <laughs> they're very well houses well you off. bought? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I have inside. I have bought more houses than Earl Shives has painted cars. How about that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so Jay, yes. give you know, of course, Melinda and Bill Gates, they billionaires and they mm-hmm. dividing up a lot of money. They don't need child support. Mm-hmm. The children are grown. Mm-hmm. Grown. What kind yeah. of yeah, what kind of advice do you have for people that may be going through a divorce? What, Carla? I can yeah. I look I, mean, I look at it this way, especially yeah. with Bill and I looked at wait, it. Wait, wait, hold on, wait a minute, hold on. Was that a bad question, Charlie? To Jay. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm gonna, my bad. I'm, let me give you advice. You, you, you know. Sometimes if you question. do something wrong, oh, you might not know how to do it right, but you can tell people, here's what here's didn't work to me. For me, and when I talk about Bill Gates' uh, separation and and, yeah. uh, and Dr. Dre, those ladies were there from the beginning when yeah. you didn't have all what you got. So for me uh-huh. to fight, right. to sit and fight her for what's had that she the helped Empire. build, yeah. it's not going to make sense. It's Especially if your ass is in Texas or California, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna win, friend. You are not gonna win, friend. Okay. Right. So she, ha- they deserve half. They do. You know. Now you know who don't deserve half, Jay? Who? That guy that was married to Mary J. Blige. Now, he ain't sung one damn song. He don't, he don't, deserve, don't deserve no half. We enough. agree he with you on that. I will agree with you on that one. He I'm don't deserve sorry. a damn thing. That's Mary yeah. J.'s money. Yeah, that was yeah. Mary J.'s yeah. money. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Right. We well, agree on that one. So. <laughs> Shirley, he didn't answer the question. You I, I didn't. Did. I really didn't. Great question. What you asked Jay. Yeah. Gave you a good response, but it wasn't answered. She thought he got away with that non uh, okay, That's why he divorced. He don't listen. That, uh, that's why I'm divorced. Communication problems, Carla. <laughs> communication. All yeah. right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so here we go with some Steve Harvey celebrity birthdays. A lot of Whoa. people born today. Okay. Oh, fine, Michael Ely, Carla, is 48. Hey, <laughs> Happy Michael birthday, Ely. Michael Ely. Go ahead, Michael Ely. <laughs> yeah. Happy Blue birthday, eyes. Michael. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, here's another one. Oh, fine, Tom Brady from the New England New England Patriots. No, no he's Tampa, with the Bay. Tampa Bay Tampa now. Bay yeah. Buccaneers okay, now. Yeah. ladies, ladies, yeah. I want to ask y'all. I always ask black women this question. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Can, can, if he's on the list, you, you put a white guy on the list of the guy that could get it. Yes. Is Tom Brady on that list? Is Tom yes. Brady on it? Yeah. Wow. Really? Is that a question, Jay? Really? Yes, that was a question. <laughs> yes. What? Wow. Now here's someone who's who's not on the list, but he's having a birthday today. Uh, Martin Sheen is 72. Not on the list. Not, not on, on the, the list. list. Not no. on the list. Happy but birthday. But happy birthday. Yeah. Happy yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DJ, my girl, Spinderella, is 50 Spin. years old today. Aww, girl, Spin you look Spin. good, baby. Love you look her. good. Spin. 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 Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Put the group back together, y'all. Come on. Yeah. Stop tripping. That's Put not going to happen. On, Spin don't uh-huh. want to talk about that. Spin Ooh. do not want to talk about that. You scared? <laughs> mess up my birthday today. <laughs> and Martha Stewart is 80 years old today. Wow. She looks 80 good. looks good on you, Martha Stewart. And hanging, hanging with really Snoop Dogg. She's <laughs> hanging with Snoop Dogg. That'll yeah. keep you young, girl. Yeah. That'll do it. That's That'll how you come good. out of jail, though. You come out kicking it with Snoop. That's how you come out. You know what I'm <laughs> All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time now for Ask Bitter Man. Bitter Man, go with your disclaimer. If you, by listening to this, get anything out that helps you, it's because you went in there on your own and got it, okay? He, he's saying, I'm not I'm not here to help you, but you can help yourself. You That's can what he's help saying. yourself. <laughs> ahead, All man. right, here we go. Uh, bitter man, this one is from Missy in Talladega. Mm-hmm. Uh, Missy writes... 
my 50 year old mom and my 45 year old auntie are having sex with the same man. Mm -hmm. My mother was dating him first and he cheated on her with my auntie. My mother broke up with him and started seeing a man that lives out of town. Mm -hmm. She doesn't see him but once a month, so I guess she got bored and started back sleeping with the cheater again. Mm -hmm. The guy brags about sleeping with them and everyone Mm -hmm. knows it except for my mother and my aunt. Mm -hmm. Should I tell my mother she's the side chick now? Mm. You, ain't got, you ain't got to tell your mama a damn thing. Your mama know <laughs> what's going on. Your mama, your mama just want to be with that man. She know what that man is about, and what that man gives to your mama, that ain't none of your damn business. Okay, wrong people say this all the time. Stay out, wrong folk business. All right, yeah. it's three yeah. people's business. You ain't got no business in <laughs> your mama, uh-huh. your auntie, and that man. Leave them. <laughs> And your mama is a grown ass woman. A grown ass woman. Good and grown. Good and grown. Good good and grown. You know what? Yeah, all I'm saying is once you smell white diamond in the house, it's time to take your ass back to your place, okay? Because things about to happen, okay? Leave your mom alone. Go ahead on. Well, you one, you're not a liar. You're, you're not here to help. I see that now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Moving on. Paris in Teaneck, New Jersey says, My husband and I got married real young and had mm-hmm. two children before we were 22 years old. I'm 42 now, and my husband wants another baby, and I can't talk what? him out of it. Mm-hmm. Our oldest son is getting married soon, so we'll have grandkids soon enough. I'm considering getting a form of birth control so there won't be any surprises. I mm. need my husband to calm down and get a hobby because mm. my baby factory is closed. Sure. Am I wrong for this? No, you're not wrong. I don't know if you've ever been to an old person's house when that stove light is on and that washcloth is hanging over the sink uh-huh. and the floor is all swept up and the trash is put away. That mm. means the kitchen is closed. Yeah. Right. There's no, yeah. Nobody's cooking a damn thing else in the kitchen. All the dishes have been dried and yes. put up. Yeah. The kitchen is closed, and your husband needs to know the kitchen is closed. We're not, we're not baking bread no damn more, okay? There'll be, there'll be nothing in the oven. There'll be nothing. In, you can look in there if you want to, but ain't a damn thing in there. Coming up next, it is our last break of the day for this yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. You heard the lady, mm-hmm. okay? <laughs> we gonna get another break. You will not. <laughs> Go ahead, Jerry. Also, at 49 minutes after the hour, we'll come back and close out the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are. Last break of the day on this yeah. Tuesday. It's been a good day. been a fun it's a good day. day. We had a good yeah. time. In, in yeah. case you don't know and you're listening, you're on your way to work, it's uh, Tuesday, okay? Yeah. Because a lot of yeah. You ever just wake up on the wrong damn day thinking, what, what day is it? It, it is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. Matter of fact, it's the third. So rent is just the last day of rent. It, it's going to be, yeah, Ooh. ain't it? They give you a little grace Ooh. period. Wow. <laughs> before it's, before it's past fee. due. Mm. Late, late fees. Oh. Okay. You know what? The the rent man is never as late as the rent. You ever notice that? That's Four? a smoke thought. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. We, you know, we, we mentioned um, a, a couple of guys that we liked. Michael Ely. Uh, that was a, 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 the break before birthday. this one. Yeah, we were talking about uh, Michael Ely's birthday is today, and we wanted mm-hmm. to say happy birthday. And we said, you know, he's a very attractive, beautiful man, mm-hmm. inside and out. So is a uh, quarterback from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady. Wow. You know, we said he was he's Tom Brady's sexy shirt. Yeah, he's smart, yeah. he's tall, he's yeah. a winner, he's oh. rich, he's beautiful. I mean, oh. what more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you were smart, you were smart. Carl, who's on your list? Carl, who's on your list? Who's your list, Carl? Oh, uh, let's see. What, what sexy, sexy list, Carl? Yeah, What's your, your sexy, sexy list? guy list? Oh, sexy guy list. Here we go. Uh, Denzel is still there. Well, not, okay, come Ooh. on. <laughs> Denzel, Washington Denzel is still there. forever. Forever. Idris is there. Oh, yes. Let's see. Idris. Um, you know who I like? I like. I always have liked Tom Cruise. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, Tom Cruise. Yeah. I love me but some Tom Cruise. You like Tom Cruise. And, I yeah, thought you was going to say Pitt. Tommy Miles. I thought you was going <laughs> to say my name. No, I would never. <laughs> 
I would never. 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 Uh, you know, on my list, it, it's um, Denzel, of course. We we definitely agree on that. Idris, but Blair. Let me just say, Shirley. Blair Underwood. Always, you say Morgan Freeman. Uh, is this real? Oh, or is com- this It's like coming. A, is this a joke? Wait, no, it's not no wait. joke, Jay. It ain't no it's joke. It's not a joke. If he were to walk in this room right now, I would pass uh-huh. out. That's how much I love Morgan Freeman. I don't know what it is. I just love Morgan Freeman. All right, you guys are haters. That's all I can say. <laughs> he ain't on my list. She can have Get those chains off the door. The enemy is here. Yes. The enemy is here. Yeah. Yeah. Get oh, those chains know. off the door. You smoke crack, don't you? You smoke crack. <laughs> you really think you bad, don't you? <laughs> I love Lorenz Morgan Tate. Freeman. Lorenz oh, Tate is Lorenz on my Tate. list. Yeah. He's Who's, on your list Who's on your list, Tommy? Who's on your list? My list? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Halle. Halle. Berry. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. J-Lo. That's it. Wow. That's that, it. My list ain't long. That's that it might be right possible. there. Okay, well, well see, okay. I'm going after women who's that I think who, I might have a chance to get. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Whoever that white girl is, uh, the progressive lady that sells progressive. <laughs> the flow? Oh, are you kidding me right now? I love her. That apron, <laughs> that apron does something <laughs> to, to me. Now, why people who sell insurance have on an apron, I don't know. I don't know what that. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. <laughs> are they cooking? Are they the baking? second lady I'm going after that, and I might have a chance, mm. is the pine saw lady. Have you seen <laughs> the pine? Oh, oh, I like just, her too. Does like somebody her. watch a lot of TV, right? When I see her, <laughs> I stand up. When I see the pine saw lady, I stand up. And, Do you? And last, last but not least, Oh. So sexy. I mean, this oh. lady is to you sexy. Just the Popeye's chicken lady. Oh yes. my God! I want to yeah. meet her. <laughs> I just if she came in the door right now. Just... Nothing like a lady with today. herbs and spices. Not today. With Nothing herbs like a lady with herbs and spices. Flour on chicken. her fingers. Oh my God! I just... <laughs> Jay, I got one more that you would not you can... believe. Who you got? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. oh yeah. Judge Judy. Good Judge God Judy can get it. <laughs> Judge Judy can get it. Judge Judy. What yeah. is that about? And and uh, Tommy, I don't mind uh, the yelling and, and talking to I, me I, like I, I'm I a I don't either. And you all talk about my Morgan Freeman? <laughs> really though? Okay, 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 ladies. Okay, ladies. Here's here's, here's a tough one for you. Mm. <laughs> What's who has the best walk? Denzel. Oh, Denzel. Or Barack Obama. 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 Or, or Obama. Denzel and Barack, they about one wood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. They about one wood. They and and uh, President Obama's getting ready to turn 60, too. 60. He's, he's, he's turning 60? Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's because he came down, he would come off the plane cool. I have to give him yeah. that. Out yeah. of all the presidents Swag. we saw come off the plane, uh-huh. yes. he came down cool, man. He didn't yeah. hold a rail or nothing. Mm-hmm. He just, I got this, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he was, he's going to throw cool a COVID-compliant yeah. 60th birthday party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Martha's Vine- yeah. Vineyard, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Biden yeah. fell up them stale, didn't he? <laughs> but he was what? cool with it, though. Mm-hmm. He was still three cool times. with it. Mm-hmm. Three times. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> when you fall. Th- not once. When you fall <laughs> up. When you fall <laughs> up. Not down. He fell up. Bless, that's a and that's, and that's all you can say about somebody when they go, bless his heart. That's all you can say. I was like, oh, Mr. President, come on now. You know, well, we were all things. wishing that 45. <laughs> it's one of those Fail. things you see on TV that you feel it. You go, ooh, ow. Yeah. Oh, Mr. President. Oh, my God. Is the camera rolling? God. <laughs> God. They got that. Oh, my God. <laughs> So are, are we done with our cuties? <laughs> yes. Oh, you got another? You got one more? No, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Okay. Mm-mm, we're yeah. finished. Did we say Brad Pitt? We said Brad Pitt. Well, I have a list of a person I who can Brad get it but don't want it. Right, how about who, that? <laughs> who can, they can get it who that? but they don't they, want it. That's who was that? That would be Fantasia. She don't want none of this. Oh, but. my God. <laughs> She had her snatch I love me, back. I love me some Tasia now. I do. Love yeah, me some we'll love Tasia. Yeah, one day I'll tell you when we were at the hoodies and uh, what Tommy did when Fantasia Hey, hey, look at, <laughs> look at the time. You got to go. Look at the time. Take us home, Jay. All right, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. 
For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 